This conference will now be recorded. Hello, it's seven o'clock. I'd like to uh, call to order the Rose Township Regular Township Board meeting, March 10th, 2021. Rose Township offices are located at 9080 Mason Street. Holly, Michigan, 48442. Um, this conference um, meeting is being held virtually due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, I think I'm going to ask everybody who isn't a board member to please mute themselves at this time. You can unmute yourself during public comment time. Could I have um, a roll call, please? You want to do the Pledge of Allegiance? Um, we could. It's like we don't have, to, have the, I have a flag. Like, oh, sure. We can do that. I got one. I have a flag. Okay. I have several hanging on my walls, but um, yeah, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I'm going to stand because that's what you're supposed to do. I pledge allegiance to the flag of America, United States, America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, can I roll call, please? Mr. Gamka? Here. Ms. Miller here. Mr. Noble? He's here. Uh, Mrs. Walls? Here. Ms. Scheibsteiner. Here. Okay. Uh, the first thing we have on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Would anybody like to move to approve the agenda as presented? I'll move to approve the agenda. Motion from Alls. I support. Or from Gamka. Any discussion? Can I have a roll call, please? Sure. Ms. Miller, yes. Mr. Noble? Yes. Mrs. Walls? Yes. Mr. Gamka? Yes. Ms. Scheibsteiner? Yes. Motion carries. Next, we have the approval of the consent agenda. I move I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. Motion from Noble, support from Miller. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, could I have a roll call, please? Mr. Noble? Yes. Mrs. Walls? Yes. Mr. Gamka? Yes. Ms. Miller, yes. And Ms. Scheibsteiner? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. We don't have any presentations. The uh, brief public comments on agenda items only. At this time, uh, so anything under new business, you can make a com comment on at this time. So public comments on agenda items. Okay. Hearing none, we will go to, um, we don't have any unfinished business. We don't have a public hearing. We'll go to new business. Uh, the approval of the Rose Township cleanup day, uh, Saturday, May 15th, 2021, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Since it's the budget item, we need to make a motion to approve. I'll, move to I'll make a motion to approve. Motion from Miller, support from Noble. Is that good? Yeah. Yeah. You good with that, Mr. Noble? Okay. Yes. Great. Okay. Any, any kind of discussion necessary here or needed? I set it up with the fire department and with Republic. We're all set to go. All right. Uh, roll call, please. 
Sure, Mrs. Walls. Yes. Mr. Gamko. Yes. Ms. Miller, yes. Mr. Noble. Mr. Noble. Yes. Okay, thank you. Ms. Scheibsteiner. Yes, that motion carries as thank well. You. Next, we have the uh, 2021 Dust Control Program. I submitted the letter from the Road Commission. In the past few years, we've done the blanket program with five ap applications. I believe we've done that for actually the past several years. Yep. Yeah, I'll make the motion we we authorize the supervisor to sign contracts with the Brooklyn County Road Commission for the application of uh, five applications over um, over uh, for the local gravel and some local gravel roads in the township. I'll support. I'd also add to ask for a total mileage of 53.45 miles of roadway for a total cost of $95,242.50. I still support. Okay. My roll call? Yep, just finishing up some notes here. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, roll call, please. Sure. Mr. Gamka? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Mr. Noble? Yes. Mrs. Walls? Yes. Ms. Scheibsteiner? Yes. That motion carries as well. Uh, I am going to ask the consumers, um, well, with consumers and the uh, because of the pipeline that came through the Saginaw Trail pipeline to address some areas that I've noticed aren't good. I'm just waiting for the frost laws to be lifted so I can um, see what kind of damage we have. So I'll be talking with consumers and the road commission about that getting some gravel done i guess not necessarily the chloride but gravel and chloride uh, next we have the other post retirement benefits trust fund uh, paul had a conversation with our account accountant reina auditor i'm sorry paul's the accountant uh and um we, we, he had some things he wanted to discuss with the board. All right, so I went to Raina and uh, I asked her um, about this post-retirement trust fund. So we, and what she told me was that we can use this fund to pay for the dental and the optical benefits. We cannot use it to pay for the $575 a month. So um, there's about $170,000 in this fund. It's in a mutual fund and I would, um, talk to the board and if they if they're um if this is acceptable to the board i will go and i i'll go back as many years as we can uh two three years and get reimbursed from from this fund for all of our dental and optical benefits that we have paid for all the retirees now it's not a small amount and um but we can and i would do this for the whole uh years um, in June of 2021, before the end of the fiscal year, we cannot pay the we cannot reimburse the $575 a month out of that. And I expressly asked her that, and she said no. And uh, because this is a fund that was set up expressly for the payment of these benefits. Mm -hmm. Well, then I'll make a motion we approve. We authorize the, the uh, treasurer to proceed uh, with the removal of funds 
uh, for past years of reimbursement for optical identical expenses and continue forward in the future for removal of funds. Support. All right, I'm sorry, but I couldn't understand your motion. Could you repeat it? It was, you were broken up. I don't know if everybody else heard you, but I couldn't hear you very well. Okay. Glenn, do you mind? Thank you. I'll make a motion that we authorize the treasurer to withdraw funds from the from the specific the described fund uh, for and proceed to get draw funds for, monies from the funds for past years payments for dental and optical and for the few and in the future withdraw money each year to cover those costs from the fund. I was hoping that the treasurer would have had, would have had the report in writing, but uh, he didn't get it. So let's go this route. How, can I ask how many years are you going back? I'm going to go back as many as they will. Um, I have to talk with burnups and um, and and see what they will burn up and flowers. I'll talk with them and see what they have to say. And um, I'll just get as many as we can. I mean, it's just going to be for the people that was receiving um, retirement benefits and, and what, from what Raina told me. But that's going to, I have to talk with burn up and flowers about that. So, Paul, is that going to leave a lot of money still sitting there? Yes, it is. I would think so. And um, well, right now it's sixty dollars a month per retiree. We have two retirees on the plan. I mean, it it the situation is that is that right now um, there is uh, small. The investments are very small right now, and um, I would prefer to leave the excess in the mutual fund because we're getting a better return on our money, unless the um, board feels otherwise. I'd like to go ahead and see how much we go. What I'd like to do is go ahead and get reimbursement for as many years as we can and transfer the money in and then see how much money is left. And then we can go ahead and discuss that at a later meeting after this is taken care of. Maria, yeah, come shut these windows. Hmm? Okay. Well, I just want to know how much money we're talking about. Is the guy going to deplete the whole fund if we're going to go back 10 years? There's about 170000 in there now, so I don't think it's going to be that much. I don't think there, we can go back, but I'll talk with Burnup and Flowers and see what they have to say. So do you want to wait to vote on this until you talk to Bernman Flower and then bring it to the April meeting or what? Whatever the board, um, whatever is up to the board, I want to go and um, get as much as possible and talk with them about it. I just wanted to update the board as to where we stood on this issue. The Maria, why didn't you tell me that? When you would have went home. Um, Glenn, do you want to go ahead with your motion here, or? Uh, well, you... then I guess I guess it get, uh, but Paul, will you you know what has to be done? Put it in detail and give us a written memorandum, which was requested several months ago. Proceed. Okay. Get, then, then, I, then I withdraw the motion, but as long as we're going to get something specific in writing from you with the procedures of what we can do. It was, it was a question several months ago. All right, well, I- So I, proceed I, in that I, manner. Talk with the, um, I talked with the accountant, she got back with me, and I wanted to go ahead and bring it up to the board. So I will give you a written proposal um, 
by April. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, our Glenn, do you want to um, you want to withdraw that for now, and we'll so see what else Paul comes up with. I, 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 I... I withdraw the motion, but please note that the treasurer was to provide a written report at the April meeting then. Okay, supply a written. Okay. 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 Uh, next, we have uh, the state of Michigan COVID-19 restriction discussion. Um, we've been keeping this on the agenda for several months now uh, because we're all aware that the changes just keep happening continuously through the last year. Right now, you are allowed to have 25 per um, meeting room i with the with the i don't even know i i think our room doesn't even hold that with our tables and depending on the board so i think we're going to have to keep being virtual at this point and i know other um municipalities that i discussed it with they are keeping theirs virtual as well because even though they have much bigger rooms than we have um if that 26th person shows up at that meeting including the board and anybody um, associated with the board, um, that meeting would have to be discontinued. So um, at this time, I, I suggest that we just keep having our meetings virtual. Does anybody have any discussion on well, that? Well, as you and I discussed, I think this, uh, this, this control is uh, completely inappropriate. Uh, the citizens there that want to speak and not everyone can uh, have ac access uh, to these go-to meetings. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we should open it up and uh, violate the law. It's more important for the taxpayers than the state of Michigan. Okay, that's interesting. Anybody else? I would like to have live meetings again. If you want to continue running the virtual, fine, but um, people have called and they want to, have live meetings again. I guess you could stop people at the door, lock the door as soon as you've met your max, and then just tell them they'd have to go home and go virtual. Actually, Maybe take reservations. I don't know, but people want to have live meetings again. I know that, can. and I would I would prefer that too. I would too, but you can't refuse somebody at the door. We've got thirty people on here right now, so. Right. Well, tonight's a little different. Typically, our board meetings, we would have 10 people, 11 people, and that was it. But I believe our meeting room, when we did the math, was only allowable for 17. So even just because of the social distancing allowed in that room, it doesn't even accommodate 25, depending on the board. Well, who amongst us has gotten their shots already? Three people max in the room. I'm board. I haven't. Can you repeat that, Paul? I didn't quite hear you. I said, who has gotten their coronavirus shots already? Oh, I have. I'm all vaccinated. All right. Well, I haven't. And I'm not interested in getting sick. I'm... Yeah, I got my second one on Monday. So, congratulations. Anyone else? Definitely not. Okay. Um, you're not old enough. Actually, as elected, we're supposed to be able to be able to get them. But I guess I'll make a motion to continue virtually and file, file, file the guidelines considering our building 
only will accommodate, um, I believe, 17 people with the proper social distancing. What, what is your motion, Diane? You kept breaking up. Oh, did I? Sorry. Yeah, I can't understand you. Uh -huh. My motion is to have our meetings virtually. Because of the COVID-19 um, restrictions and that our meeting room can only accommodate I can't hear anybody. 17 people. I can't time. hear anybody. Really? Can anybody hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Glenn, can you? Yeah, you're just breaking up earlier. Is there like an Asian guy? <clears throat> okay, so <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to repeat it wrong. Glenn, can you hear now? Yeah. My motion is to continue having meetings virtually due to the COVID-19 restrictions and that our lower level at this time can only hold 17 at a social distance. And according to the law, if we were to overdo what we are allowed to have in that room, we would have to turn people away, which we can't do because of the Open Meetings Act. And uh, so we would have to, I believe we have 24 hours to have our meeting elsewhere is how it's done. And I second. I seconded the motion. <laughs> okay, so I did get a, Diane. Can I say one thing? I got an uh, email yesterday from the clerks, and uh, they had said, according to MML, there is reluctance on behalf of the legislature to allow for no reason remote meetings beyond the end of this month. Our city attorney passed along the information and they were urging local communities to contact their state reps and senators now if their boards, commissions, worse wish to continue with remote meetings. So I was taking it that uh, it sounded like a lot of them are going back to live meetings after I got that email. Is that for board of re review only? Because I know I got a letter for that for board of review. No, this was from um, the clerks, the Oakland County clerks. But were they addressing the board of review? Because at that time, board of review was supposed to be um, only in vir virtual and because of the change that just came along last week, uh, they were allowing it just before, the day before the board of view, I believe they allowed it to be um, held in person because it's done by appointments. So yeah. I, I yeah, did, they did it all in person this past week and this week. Right. Uh, so mm. What I read today, I went and researched it, is that it's a 25 person maximum. It doesn't matter how big your room is, uh, as far as accommodating. So ours is actually less than that if you go with the social distancing. No, I'm trying to turn the TV on. Everything's over there. I couldn't get it to turn on. Okay. Okay, so I had a motion from Stribe Snyder and support from Walls. Can I roll call? I don't know if anybody knows what the motion is, but. You said motion is to have virtual meetings due to COVID-19 restrictions and the meeting room only holds a maximum of 17 people. Ours does, yes, correct, thank you. Can I roll call, please? Sure, Mrs. Walls? Yes. Mr. Gamko? Yes. Ms. Miller? No. Mr. Noble? Glenn? Glenn? <laughs> Ryan, can you call him? I need a vote, Glenn. Glenn, can you hear me? Proceed about thinking we can get on with it, guys. Can I have, um, Diane, are you a yes? I am.
Thank you. Hello. Hey, how do you vote on my motion? Um, I, I, I couldn't hear anything. I couldn't hear. I'm trying to get back on. Okay, gonna try and. All right, we'll give you a few minutes to pop back and see if we can get back on. Okay. 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 All right. Awesome. You can try and get back on. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. <sighs> oh. Okay, no more. I'm here. <laughs> we, we need your vote, Glenn, please. Yeah, what was the motion? Quickly. Uh, sorry about that. I, I, I couldn't hear well. Okay, the motion was to have uh, continue with virtual meetings due to COVID 19 restrictions. Um, because the meeting room only holds a maximum of 17 people. Yes or no? Repeat it one more time. Oh. The motion was to continue to have virtual meetings due to COVID-19 restrictions because the meeting room, our meeting room, holds a maximum of 17 people. So the vote was Walls, yes, Gamka, yes, Miller, no, Schneider, yes. I need Noble's vote. No. Thank you. Motion carries. All right, uh, next we have announcements. Uh, the Planning Commission meeting will be April 1st at 7 p.m. The Zoning Board of Appeals meeting is April 6th at 7 p.m. The North Oakland County Fire Authority Board meeting is March 16th. Uh, the assessing office is available Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 248-858-2179. The Township Board regular meeting, our next one is April 14th at 7 p.m. The Rose Township Cleanup Day is Saturday, May 15th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Civic Park. The uh, first no has event of the year is Saturday, April 24th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Oxford Middle School. Uh, they're gonna use the online registration that they started during the uh, pandemic. It's, so you can register somewhere between three and four weeks prior to the event at www.nohaz.com. And next we have miscellaneous reports. Versus NACFA. Paul, do you have anything? Well, we did have a closed, meet, a closed meeting at, um, to discuss some um, employee uh, problems. And, um, that's all. We had to start the um, attorneys to investigate this and get back with us. This isn't, but nothing's been decided. Hmm. Didn't understand that. He did the chief's review as well, and he did receive his merit award. Um, our discussion was one of our discussions was about uh, department uh, recruitment and retention. 
um, the chief is considering possibly creating more full-time positions for NACPA. I believe we asked for some comparisons of wages and things like that that are, we're on, are will be presented to us. Next, we have the Planning Commission, um, Glenn. Yes, uh, I I am the trustee township board represented the Planning Commission, and I'd like to report the following: there are no there are no more issues in, no more issues scheduled. But regarding the fee, Facebook emails, et cetera, the naming of the complainant is not appropriate. Is this going to be a new policy? Every zoning, every zoning complaint, uh, complainant has their name published. Furthermore, references to the Planning Commission member are erroneous and inappropriate. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Holly Era Youth Assistance. Um, I, I did not attend because of a conflict of, of appointments. So next month, I'll have a better report. Okay. Thank you. We did get the um, minutes from the last one emailed to us today, I believe. Uh, next, we have the Cemetery Committee report. Debbie? Yep. Yep. We met. Uh, we're still discussing the sign. We're getting quotes for new signs for each of the cemeteries. Our next meeting is April 12th. Um, I guess everybody saw that someone crashed through the fence on February 20th. I got the police report yesterday. I gave you a copy in your drawer, Diane, so you have a copy of it too. Um, so I have took pictures yesterday. I sent it to the adjuster. So he started the claim um, with the other company, Farm Bureau of the Vehicle. Um, I've contacted Jeremy Lintz today and I've got three, four firemen coming Saturday morning to help clean up the glass that's in the cemetery now that I can actually move stuff around because they didn't want us touching anything prior to this. Um, I've contacted Jim at Milford Benz. He gave me a quote. I faxed that over to the uh, adjuster and he's authorizing that. He also wants the fire department paid and then I'll send him the invoice. He'll collect that. Um, his name is David Clark from Argonaut. He's handling the claim. Um, what else? So Jim is supposed to pick up the fence stuff and then he gave me a quote to replace that if we decide to the chain link fence. But um, it was somebody that crashed through the fence, driving too fast and intoxicated at 3 p.m. Saturday, uh, February 20th. So as I said, I got a copy of the police report. There was a delay in receiving it. I put a copy in your door, Diane. So you, you had requested a copy of the police report. So everything's going on status quo. So that should be um, hopefully Maybe next week, now that the snow is gone, they can start. Um, Jim could remove the fence. And I didn't know. I, we have to talk about if you want to replace it, if you want to just keep the money, um, because we were going to replace the fence next year anyways. So that's something we'll have to talk about in April or May. That's, um, that's all I've got right now. OK, next we have the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, Oh, you don't you don't have anything from them at this time, do you? Yeah, they didn't meet. We did not meet last time. We, I I expect that we'll uh, I expect they will have a meeting on in April, but the meeting in March was canceled. Okay, thank you. Uh, Park and Rec. Uh, I'm meeting with several, hopefully, I'm hoping to meet with several and um, working on creating a play area at the Civic Park, which I know I discussed this with you guys when I took the swings down when I um, discovered that everything there was pretty much a um, liability. Uh, so I'm waiting to meet with a few different people to uh, have a playground created at Civic as well as Dearborn. And um, 
not just put in clay structures and the swings that I have, but uh, the, the ground surface has to be as required um, and has to be meet the public safety playground surface. Um, so I'm going to be doing that. Um, and I'll be submitting some suggestions to the board for approval once I actually meet with these people and hopefully we can, this can be the year to get that done. Uh, next, I have the um, Heritage Committee. A lot of research into our history has been taking place. It's really exciting. They're finding out some really um, interesting things if you are interested in local history like I am. We're still working on the videos. They're being created so that we can share uh, the exciting history uh, with others. And a supervisor report. Um, a lot of you are here because you want to speak about Devoted Barn. We've received several letters concerning the Devoted Barn. I also received several phone calls asking questions because um, some things that were being stated on uh, social media as facts, people were questioning them. Um, I had several lengthy conversations based on some of those calls uh, and letters, and I asked our attorney if I could address a few items. I will not answer any questions because there could be an appeal, but I want to share a few things with you. Um, I'll start with our oath of office. Our oath of office is taken before we can take office as an elected official. Uh, we swear to protect and uphold the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the state of Michigan, and protect and uphold our local ordinances as well. That's the township, that's the role of a township elected official, or one of them anyways. The voted bar uh, litigation is an ordinance violation case. All litigation cases by law can be discussed with an attorney in a closed session. Votes from discussion in closed session must be done in an open meeting. It is the practice of Rose Township and that of most government entities to go into closed session for litigation discussion. And it is allowable by law. Our township attorney was told on several occasions that the devoted barn would submit proposal for kennel use <clears throat> in close standards to Rose Township's ordinance requirements, but nothing was ever submitted to Rose Township. A kennel special land use application was never submitted to Rose Township offices either. At this time, no applications have been submitted to Rose Township by a devoted barn. I'll read a little bit from the judgment as well. Having, this is from the judge, um, Leo Bowman, having reviewed the motion and response, this court finds that it would not be justifiable for defendants, Borden specifically, to rely on statements by Pluth based on her own statement that she didn't think he had a clue to what was needed for her type of operation. Further, this court finds devoted barn acted prior to any discussion between Borden and Pluth since he had already, since she had already moved the dogs onto the property approximately two months before the discussion. As to the zoning ordinance amendment, this court finds that the documentary evidence supports that the devoted barn failed to obtain special land use approvals under either amendment and that both would have been applied to them. And that's a part of the statement from the judge. I did let the attorney know of the things I was going to um, state this evening as far as that goes, just so people, based on the phone calls I received, there was a lot of misinformation out there. And uh, I think some of those things will clear some of that up. Uh, next, we have um, public comments. And these are comments only. The board will not be answering any questions. Uh, you have three minutes to discuss whatever you're here for if you want to make a comment. 
but we will take comments only. So who would like to start? Uh, I would like to start. Hi. You need to state your name and your address, please. My name is Wendy Burton. I live at 1398 Beaverbrook. I actually live right across the field from the barn. Um, I, I did write a letter. I was one of the people that wrote a letter, but I'd like to just sit, uh, read through some of the things to summarize um, my letter so that everyone else can hear it. Um, I've been uh, a resident of Rose Township for 29 years. Uh, my I raised my family here. In October of 2019, when I learned that the devoted barn was coming in across the street, basically from me, um, I was so excited and I started to volunteer. Um, since then, I've helped with all aspects of caring for those dogs. Um, and I've really come to love a lot of them like they're my own. Um, I'm not sure if you understand that our, we're not a, a regular animal rescue, um, an animal adoption. We take dogs who have special needs because they've been abused or neglected. Um, they're fearful of people. Um, we have to work with them to build their confidence. And um, it takes time for them to be rehabilitated and moved into a foster home and eventually into a, a regular home. I really take a lot of pride in my volunteer work and I have referred other people in this township, some of my neighbors who now are also volunteering. I have personally gone um, and picked up donations from people who call, who want to help. They donate blankets, they donate returnable cans, they donate, you know, people really take a, a sense of community and a sense of pride in being able to help um, with this rescue. I feel it's a great addition to our township. And um, I just want to mention that I can sometimes hear the dogs barking from my house as well because I'm across the street. The dogs don't bark at night. The dogs only bark when uh, one of the volunteers is go initially walks into the barn to start their care. Um, and I think the most important thing is, is from the beginning when I started volunteering, the plan was to build uh, another suitable kennel for these dogs and to move yeah. them farther into the property yeah. and to put them in the kennel. So, you know, it's just that it has taken more time. COVID hit um, and our funds were very limited. We rely on, on donations and our funds were very limited. So I, I understand I guess to summarize, I understand that um, it would be possible that if three out of five of you were to were to vote for it, I guess would be the right term, that um, you could reverse the, the 60 day ruling or whatever it is that we have the time limit to move these dogs and to give us more time to get the, the funds we need um, and to get a new kennel built. And that would that would like solve everyone's issues. So I, I really, I respectfully um, ask you to consider that. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, Wendy. Anybody else? I feel like I know that, that last name. Hello, good evening. My name is Sarah Minter. My address is 10023 Fish Lake Road. Um, I just, want to again thank all of you for your time and allowing me to speak um i am i apologize i'm not very prepared and i just wanted to share however my own experience much like wendy just did i was very pleased when i heard the devoted barn was moving in and i think they contribute a lot to the community it's a very positive um environment to be in and i too myself have since decided to volunteer and feel like it's you know, there is such positivity. I mean, like children are now involved in volunteering and and I have been able to speak with the other volunteers and Melissa Borden is absolutely wonderful and her entire staff, everyone that works there, they are some of the finest, highest quality people that anyone would ever come across. And I truly do think that it would be a positive move for anyone. If none of you have been there before, please go and visit take a tour of the property and learn what really goes on at the devoted barn. I think self-education and taking the time to do something along that line would be beneficial to all of you, anyone in the community that has any doubt of what is going on there and what it really means to be involved in that, uh, in that program. Um, 
and I have had my own discussion with, you know, people at the Devoted Barn. And as I had written Debbie this morning, thank you, Debbie, very much for um, getting back to me so quickly and sharing my email and my video. I do appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, um, you know, I think there's also a little bit of a misconception as to the dogs and when they were moved in and and again, I'm hearing stuff from one side. I know there are always two sides to every story, but please know that um, I've been given some information that, no, the dogs actually, let me see, I have it written down here. Actually, the dogs did not get moved in August or they, um, they were not moved until August. I do apologize. I have it written down because I didn't want to get it messed up. But uh, so please don't think that uh, they were moved they were moved actually on August 15th. So please don't think that they were moved before they were supposed to. And I want everyone to please take into consideration much again, like Wendy said, they're a nonprofit organization. They have limited funds. They rely on donations. And anytime that, you know, they have been asked to change something, they have complied as quickly as possible. But again, they're at the mercy of volunteers donations, they rescue and take in animals that are through criminal cases for Oakland County. They do a lot of extra work. And again, like Wendy said, um, they're dealing with dogs that have been abused in more ways than you can ever imagine. Um, animals have been neglected. They rescue horses out of like, like auctions where they're going to sell them for meat. I mean, they are true short people. I mean, they are just the best of people. And and please, I mean, give them a little extra time to be able to pull everything together. They have plans to move the dogs, but, you know, with lawyer fees that strike me as being quite unnecessary. And I don't want the township wasting their money and time either. I mean, I'm sure the township has plenty of other areas where that money could be better utilized and put to better use. Just said that the fence was damaged around the cemetery. There is something you can fix. You know, you're working on some playground equipment and getting that taken care of for the community. Again, it's it's just another positive aspect and another way that I think the township money could better be used than going against a nonprofit. I thank you all very much for your time. I appreciate it, and I wish you well. Hope everyone stays safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Anybody else? Several of you are muted. If anybody's trying to speak, um, I'll give you a minute. Does anybody else have anything they want to say? Yes, I do. I was trying to get it off mute. Okay. Um, I wanted to answer Glenn. Normally, I wouldn't have put anyone. Who, who is this? I'm addressing this to Glenn. Oh. Glenn, I wouldn't normally have put anyone's name out there for any complaint. However, Mr. Maurer had his name when this first oh. started out there on Facebook on social media, all over the place, complaining. That's oh, why that was, I did I'm, not feel any hesitation in mentioning his name at all. OK, and he have, on top of that, he's a neighbor. And um, that, on was top Linda, that, that was Linda Dagenhart, by the way. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Linda Dagenhart, Clinton Street, 9125 Clinton, Rose Center. Okay. The other point is that he was appointed to the Planning Commission shortly thereafter his complaints were made. This would look to me almost like instead of getting his own attorney to argue with Ms. Borden, if he felt it was necessary, the township turned into his attorney. It's an ordinance issue, but thank you. No, there was no ordinance at the time. Right. There That's, was an ordinance written the judgment in the that I just read says the states that she could apply to under e either of the ordinance or absolutely was an ordinance. No, that's when they took her to court after they rewrote an ordinance. Mm -hmm. yeah. They might have taken her the first time, but that was that you it was put down. The court would not. Read. And then right. you came back. I, I did read the judgment. Oh. And then took her to court again. <laughs> Horrible. This is very iffy, very iffy. And you might better work with her because in the meantime, she is also insulated 
the area where the dogs are. You don't hear them barking anymore. <laughs> it's an unusual if you do. So now, why are they continuing with this? And are they going to find other things to cause problems about? It's like I said in my note, it's more like a vendetta now. It doesn't make the township look good. That's all. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Hey. What was that? This is Julia Stern. Okay, go ahead. Julia so Stern. Is that your address? Longer, number nine. Munger Road. 1445 Munger Road. I guess I'll go along with the consensus, I guess, of everyone that you should not be wasting township funds for litigation. Uh, I think everybody wants the devoted barn to be maintained. Uh, this is, as uh, Linda Dagenhardt said, a vendetta and you're only representing one property owner and not the rest of the township. And uh, I don't think you pay attention to what the people say, but uh, I'll just add another uh, name to the list of people that uh, are uh, in the side of the devoted barn, not on the side of the township trustees, and you should just drop the litigation and uh, the relentless prosecution, persecution of the devoted barn. Thanks. I don't think you've got a reputation of listening to public comment or adhering to public comment, but that's what my thoughts are. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Anyone? Hello, may I speak? Yes, you may. Just state your name, please, and um, your address. There's all these Hello, this here. is Devin Markinette, and my address is 1300 West Rose Center Road, Holly, Michigan. <clears throat> I Go would ahead. like to read my letter. I live directly across from the street of everything that is going on, and I guess I'm supposed to actually state the organization's name so we're all clear here, The Devoted Barn. What I would first like to state is that I am very, very thankful to be a Rose Township resident, and I truly appreciate the allocation of resources to preserve our township values and ordinances. It means a lot to me and my family. I wanted to state that I can remember my husband working on our fence of May 29th of 2019 as the devoted barn began to move into the house across the street. I can also remember incessant barking from that same house as we watched the temporary chain link fence be built in front of the garage for several dogs. Uh, two shepherds come to mind. <clears throat> We decided to give these neighbors the benefit of the doubt because they were just moving in and getting situated. Unfortunately, to this day, little has changed. Since the moment in time that took place, our life has been completely accompanied by constant noise of barking, pig squealing, machinery at all hours of the day. I understand it's a farm, but at night too. The dogs, are so loud my children cannot sleep and I'm not talking about just the barn we've also had dogs try to explore our property this extremely worries me I have concerns about this because not all dogs like children or other dogs and I have done everything in my power to keep my dogs on property I would like to finish by saying thank you to the Rose Township for your time and upholding our laws as well as our regulations. And I also wanted to say thank you to all Rose Township residents for understanding our position in these trying times and to please remain respectful to me and my family. Thank you for your time. Goodbye. Thank you, Devin. Anyone else? Yes, I would like to speak. Uh, 
Kelly? My name is my name is Kelly Kazmerzak. Um, okay. I am not a Rose Township volunteer uh, resident, but I am a volunteer. Can you and say I your address, do, please? It is two four four two five Warren, Michigan. I am a volunteer at the barn, and I I was the one who uh, erected the fencing for the two shepherds that the previous resident talked about. Um, I have documentation that I erected that in July of 2020 because I took days off from work to have that done and I enlisted several friends to help. So I, I just have to state that that's the only thing I want to state is that the previous resident was incorrect mm -hmm. of her dates. So thank you very much for listening to me because I am not a resident. And I know you guys have a very hard job. You guys stay safe. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kelly. Anyone else? Any other public comments? Hi, everybody. This is uh, Aaron Marconet. I'm Devin's husband. I also live at 1300 West Rose Center oh. Road. Um, I'll go ahead and read my letter as well, if you don't mind. Come here. Okay, so uh, as a taxpaying resident of Rose Township, I'd like to thank all the members okay. of the board for addressing the concerns of my household regarding the land use by the devoted barn. For the last 21 months, especially including this last year, it's been very complicated for many reasons. Okay. But in the midst of everything, the I'm sorry. Debbie, um, there's somebody speaking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're going to be having a conversation? No, Mark just tripped over the dog. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's okay. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't interrupting. Um, I was just saying that, uh, you know, times have been very difficult, especially in this last year due to obvious reasons in the world. But uh, in the midst of everything, you know, the board, you've done a great job to try to protect us as residents and uh, the heritage in this township. So this topic hits home for us pretty hard. I've always enjoyed working outside, doing things in the yard, grilling, you know, playing with my children. Uh, and I've always liked to wave as people go by, but uh, things are a little different now that we have expressed concerns regarding the devoted barn. Um, it's not so much even a noise issue at this point. It's, you know, I go to collect our mail or work around the property and instead of people waving as they drive by, I get glares and angry faces. So I mostly just keep my head down when I'm near the road. Uh, my parents came to visit and stay in their motor home and were awoken multiple times during the night due to the barking. We've had people visit in the past, and the first thing they say when they get out is, what on earth is that noise? Um, our daughter has told us on multiple occasions, mommy, daddy, I can't sleep because of the barking outside. Last summer, um, this tops it all, my wife was taking a walk in our field and somebody drove by, blew smoke in her direction, flicked a cigarette butt at her, and then proceeded to go park at the devoted barn. And this was while she was strolling our youngest son. So that kind of hit a nerve with me. Um, so I can't convey how much we truly understand that dogs are really great companions. We have two dogs, one of which is a rescue. We wholeheartedly appreciate the need for animal sanctuaries, but now my sanctuary is compromised. We didn't move here to start a family so that we could live in stress and be shunned for voicing concerns. We're just striving for what, for what we once had. So unlike those who visit and volunteer, even if you do live close to the devoted barn, you're not across the road. You get to go home and you get to go back to your households and to your families. We can't, quote, go home. We're here day. We're here at night. We're here every day. So in closing, Jacob is not the only person who's complained, and he should be not the only one targeted. So thank you all for for listening to me. Thank you to the board for doing what you're doing. And as my wife said, thank you for continuing, continuing to be respectful to uh, my family and I. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Can, excuse me, can I add just a little bit after the last comments? 
If you if you're gonna uh, have no, to I'm not a, I'm, what he just said, I'm not going to allow that. No, no, I just. I, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I thought this was not a discussion. This, it's this not a discussion. A, I just had another question because of the last comment. No questions. Wait, this is comments only. And okay, comments, so I have a comment. The comments are so, to the board. In my opinion, respectfully to the board, is that it would most benefit the community to work with the devoted barn to help all the neighbors levy uh, you know get rid of all their concerns opposed to spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in 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 money um i i just don't see even in my community that i live in i would be severely upset if I found out and I, I live in a big city that we just spent twenty thousand dollars because one person in my neighborhood had four dogs in their yard that barked. Could we help that neighbor out and get them the, the correct the correct situation and to let you know remedy this opposed to spending all this money in litigation. It it just doesn't make sense to me. And I come from a big city and twenty thousand right, dollars to me is a You're lot of money. Three minutes. Oh well, okay. <laughs> I think I already discussed with the that there was no um nobody came to us with any applications. Nobody even admitted uh, tried to I, I respectfully disagree with you. That. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, please. Um, I could speak. Pamela? Yeah, hi. Um, my name is actually Adrian. My last name's Quenville. I am not a Rose Township resident. Um, my address is 38037 Moravian in Clinton Township. Um, I did write a letter to the township in defense of the devoted barn where I'm a volunteer and have been for the last four years. Um, I want to respond a little bit to Devin and her husband about the noise uh situation i would like to point out to them that they are working only it's, you're supposed to be addressing oh, okay supposed to be addressing anybody who's speaking okay i would like to address their comments regarding working late into the evening um there have been many times that i have left the barn and through covid i found myself at the barn sometimes three to five days a week I'd like to address the fact that they too were out in their property working sometimes until midnight, one o'clock in the morning, running tractors, building enclosures to store their things in, bringing their horses in and making just as much noise as our dogs were not barking. And that isn't something that you can deny. I also wanna say that I drive by their house every time I go to the barn, I wave to the mister and he waves back. So not everybody is glaring at them and treating them like criminals. I'd also like to point out the fact that Jacob, who started this whole thing, he and his wife are now putting their house up for sale because they're afraid of our volunteers, which really is disturbing to me because they are now painting us as monsters because they are afraid we are going to harm them. That is terrible. Absolutely Ooh. terrible. Okay. Yeah. So I just want to say that I hope for the sake of the barn and the sake of Rose Township that you guys can overturn this, relook at the situation, and, and give fair treatment where fair treatment is due. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, last call for public comment. Hearing none, I'm going to close public comment. And I'm going to move to adjourn. The time is 8.05. Everybody have a wonderful evening. Thanks for being here. Take care, all.